The Miku Baby Monitor is the newest kid on the Wi-Fi Baby Monitor block, and it's no stranger to money because the monitor itself comes in at $400. So today, we're going to be answering two questions. Are the capabilities and features of the Miku Baby Monitor worth that $400 price tag? And two, how does this monitor stack up against our favorite baby monitor, the Nana Plus? Let us tarry no further and dive into it. Hey people, I'm John with Fathercraft. First, before we get into the actual review, I have to uh, comment on the unboxing experience I had with the Miku Baby Monitor. It was outstanding. If you are an Apple fan out there like I am, every time you open an Apple product, you just get that feeling like, yeah, the money I spent on this thing was definitely worth it. And I had that exact same feeling with this baby monitor. So let's dive into some of those features that add up to that $400 price tag starting with the video specs. This monitor comes with a quarter inch, five megapixel sensor and records video at 720p, which is technically considered high definition. It also records that at 30 frames per second. So the field of view spans a wide area coming in at 130 degrees. This uh, monitor has night vision um, because it wouldn't be much of a baby monitor if you couldn't see your baby in the dark. Moving on to audio. The speakers inside the monitor utilize a dual Ole Wolf speaker system. Now, I don't have an audio background or a know much about audio speakers, but I can tell you that the speakers in this monitor are pretty impressive. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the app. The layout is clean and not at all cluttered, so that's a big hurdle cleared by Miku. You'd be amazed at how bad some apps are with Wi-Fi monitors. So the big selling point with the Miku is that it has the ability to track and measure breathing using the monitor's internal computer vision capabilities. So if your baby is sleeping and being still, the breathing waveform will display, letting you know that indeed your baby is still breathing. I need to make a quick correction here regarding the two types of technology that these two monitors use. Miku actually utilizes what they call sensor fusion technology. Basically what this means is that this monitor uses several different sensor-like components along with image and video processing as well as radar to track the breathing of your baby. So Miko's claim is that using this multi-sensor approach allows the monitor to understand what is going on inside of your baby's crib with high confidence. So the biggest difference between this technology and what Nanit uses, i.e. their computer vision, is understandably different. Nanit is tracking movement patterns using pixel movement sensors, whereas Miku is tracking breathing and movement, so Miku is utilizing more tech to be able to do this. A more accurate comparison should actually be between this monitor and, say, the Cocoon Cam or even Alet's new Alet Cam, as they both monitor breathing as well. Well, fortunate for us, we have both Cocoon Cam and Alet Cam, so we will be able to compare all three of these monitors and how well they track breathing. So be sure to stick around for that in an upcoming video. All right, let's pivot over to the audio and visual controls within the app. The sound audio defaults to having the background audio on, which is a bit of a hassle, but there ain't nothing you can do about it. One thing I really enjoy about the, um, the volume feature or the audio features within this monitor is the way you control the volume. When you're in the app and you're adjusting the sound, it only affects the audio coming from the monitor through the app and no other audio or app that you have on your phone that uses your phone's speakers. Uh, for instance, if I'm turning the app volume up and I close the monitor, it has not affected any other apps or features that I have on my phone, like alarms or alerts or any other settings that use the phone speakers. All right, moving back to video within the app. So you can orient the feed to either portrait or landscape by tapping this icon here but both orientations are static, meaning you can't pinch to zoom or swipe to pan like you can within the Nana Plus app. And that becomes a big deal when you're not able to mount the monitor on the wall, giving you that bird's eye view. Uh, Calvin's walls are made out of sheetrock and I hate drilling holes into sheetrock. It's, it's a mess. So what I did was create a, uh, a DIY monitor stand. I bought a tablet stand, we got a two by four, and then I drilled the wall mount onto the two x four and stuck it in the tablet stand. I mention that because the view I have now with the floor stand is long ways, as opposed to if it were mounted on the wall, peering down into the crib, wide ways, whatever word that is. So when you have the app open, 
Um, and because you can't pinch the zoom or swipe left and right to move the view over, it would be great to be able to zoom in a little bit to the area within the app that I wanna see, as opposed to seeing everything in that field of view. For instance, the Nano Plus app, you can pinch the zoom and swipe where you want the view and the focus to be. If you go within the settings tab, you can see that you are able to toggle between low, medium, and high video resolutions, which I take to mean you know, 480p, 660p, and 720p, respectively. All right, looking at the analytics tab, this is basically a representation of your child's sleep at night in bar graph form. So it's not so much an analytics feature as much as it's a dashboard housing data. Looking at the activity tab, which is something that I don't like to do because it gives me anxiety every time I open it up. Here's why. The tab is so loaded with activity that it becomes nearly impossible to comb through. And unfortunately, there isn't a way to customize what the monitor records, so you end up with recordings of everything the monitor thinks is movement or non-movement. You can uh, filter non-movement recordings and movement recordings, but again, it doesn't do much to shrink down what's been recorded. The Nana Plus actually uses its smart vision to determine what activity is worth recording versus what activity is not worth recording. So it greatly reduces the number of clips you would need to root through. All right, two-way communication. In this app, once you hit the two-way communication button, it's set on a 15 second timer. So if I wanna sing my favorite power ballad to Calvin to you know get him back to sleep, I'm going to constantly be interrupted and I'm not gonna be able to get the full feeling of that song out to him the way I want to. In my life, I've seen heartache and pain. I wanna know what love is. And by that point, Calvin is usually passed out dead asleep. White noise. This is an interesting selection of white noise options within the Miku Baby Monitor. Um, if your baby is into trippy sci-fi ambiance, then this monitor has the white noise he's looking for. All right, it's time to stack these two next to each other and figure out which one comes on top. Ew, gross, John, which one comes on top? First category, aesthetics. Now aesthetically, the Miku looks really sharp with its metal accents and sleek, slender look. But as the saying goes, beauty is only skin deep, which well, I guess isn't actually true with this uh, monitor. There's a, a lot of really sexy hardware inside. So I'm gonna pull out one of my favorite quotes from the classic 1992 comedy, Wayne's World. A perfect body, the right clothes, and a great car can get you far in America, almost to the top, but it can't get you everything. That being said, if there was an award in this category, I would give it to the Miku. All right, next category, video. Nana easily takes this category and it's easy to see why. 920p is just simply higher resolution than 720p. Same with the night vision feed. Uh, the Nanit's night vision is much more clear and a lot more detailed than the Miku's night vision. So in the video category, Nana Plus. All right, let's talk about sound output real quick. Remember, the Miku has these two pretty high-tech speakers within the monitor. So any sound coming out of it, it's gonna sound really good. With the Nanit, it's a little more tinny, a little more echoey, um, like you're talking into a big room. Again, it's not that big of a problem because Calvin really can't tell the difference. And that sound coming out of the monitor is more for him as opposed to me. For me, the more important sound output is the sound coming from the app. With the Miku, I struggled hearing anything out of the app until I had turned the volume on my phone way up. Whereas Nanit, I could hear anything. I'd give the advantage of sound output within the app to the Nanit, but I'd give the advantage of the sound output of the monitor to the Miku. So overall, I'd say it's a push. Both monitors really could use an upgrade on white noise here, uh, but I'm not really a fan of the dystopian space, futuresque type aesthetic that the Miku is bringing to the table. Next category, security. This to me, for all intents and purposes, is a toss up. Both have security encryption, but the Miku only has 128-bit 
AES encryption, whereas the Nano Plus provides 256-bit AES encryption. Okay, me again. According to Miku, they actually do provide 256-bit encryption, which has now been updated on their site. So you're welcome for that. Anyway, again, this is according to Miku. The big difference is that the Miku monitor stores the encryption keys inside of a physical tamper-proof chip, which means that if your monitor was stolen, or to use the example that uh, the kind people at Miku gave us, if you sold your monitor or gave it away, the encryption keys couldn't be accessed. Nanit's encryption keys are stored using a software-based system. So I can't make a claim one way or the other regarding which method is safer for you, uh, because again, I'm not a security expert, but I just wanted to provide this information to you the way Miku presented it to us. Uh, if you're watching this video and do have some software or hardware security background, please feel to comment below and uh, let us know your thoughts on the matter. All right, back to the review. But in all seriousness, this is an important topic to understand, and we are actually working on a video now that will give you all the information you need to understand how safe and secure Wi-Fi monitors actually are. So stay tuned for that. All right, app experience. Both apps are straightforward and clean, but the Nana app provides a lot more useful functionality than the Miku. The pinch to zoom and swipe to pan come to mind first. The actual settings tab in the Nana Plus app also give you way more control over customizing different features like crib positioning and security permissions and bandwidth settings, just to name a few. The biggest thing for me is the data and the use of that data with the insights package. Until another monitor can provide this level of support, meaning support and coaching for you, Sally Q parent out there, the Nano Plus will continue to have this as their ace in the hole to trump all other Wi-Fi monitors. Hey, me again. As with any tech these days, before you know it, the system or software or app or whatever it is has been updated. And such is the case with the Miku monitor. So we reached out to them so they could fact check our review um, because they, Full disclosure sent us this monitor to review for free. They actually got back to us rather quickly and let us know that the Miku app is going to very soon be undergoing some significant changes, specifically around the pinch to zoom feature, the white noise selection, and a more robust analytics section. So once the app does get updated, we will have another video providing the full extent of those updates and obviously our thoughts on them. So just looking at those five categories, I give the advantage to the Nana Plus. It's time to wrap this up. Yeah, hi, future me again. Since recording this review, my overall feelings on just how impressive this monitor really is have continued to increase. In my original conclusion, I stated that there simply wasn't enough innovation going on to warrant such a high price tag. However, it doesn't really take that next step into the world of innovation. Well, that's not necessarily the case. I mean, this company is integrating military level tech into this baby monitor. And that's not to say that I think that having this type of tech is uh, vital or crucial or absolutely necessary. But the more I think about how powerful this monitor is, when specifically looking at the hardware, uh, the more I think that, yeah, this company is all about innovation. So a 180, but it still remains to be seen how they put all this hardware together to provide what I think is the most valuable feature of any baby monitor. And that's the feature uh, that the Nana offers, which is the insights package. Um, and I've talked at length about what that is and, and you can click the links below to our Nana Plus review and our best baby monitor review uh, in the description to learn more about that. Another but here, um, I'm, I'm really excited to see where this company is headed. Um, I think it's going to be a major force in the baby monitor space for years to come. <sighs> okay, I'm done now. Thanks for bearing with me through the sickness and the, uh, the uh, continued updates. We appreciate it. And we will see you in the next video.